I'm copying the comment reply format from that other app because I like to use people disagreeing with me to elaborate further on the points I make. Usually when I post about real life stuff, YouTube's response is, okay, but when are you going back to Dark Souls videos? And this gives me a way to keep people's attention while I talk about off-brand stuff. This guy here saw my short about how sometimes growth can be a bad thing if you turn into something that your past self would have nothing but disdain for. And he left the kind of comment that shows that he either didn't get what I was saying or is exactly the kind of person who needed to hear it. See, when someone responds to advice about resisting change with this kind of knee-jerk dismissal, that's likely a sign that they're the exact type of person who needs the wisdom that I'm offering. This type of person has likely prioritized becoming a safer version of himself over becoming a more empowered version of himself. Likely prioritized harmony over self-expression. Likely got a little too invested in protecting his peace and embraced conformity to do so. So if you hear not all growth is good and your first instinct is to say something like this, ask yourself, over the past five years did I conquer my inhibitions or did I feed them? Did I become a more unapologetic version of myself or a compromised version? Is my process of making decisions and forming beliefs more independent or less independent? Did my beliefs conveniently evolve in a way that aligned with the dominant societal values? There's always the possibility that I'm misreading this commenter's mentality and he's just someone who didn't get my point. That's fine, I had to condense it into a one minute clip so it could be posted as a short, which doesn't leave room for nuance. My point is that true growth isn't about turning back, it's about gaining speed. You should be adding to your personality and interests, not removing things from them. A lot of people make this mistake of thinking that growing up means dulling your edge to be palatable to mainstream society, and life can basically end for you at age 25 if you don't actively resist outside influences to change. This is for a couple reasons. First, life just wears you down. People get too busy to do the kind of introspection and deep thought that you have time for before you begin a career. This is by design. The people who sign our paychecks don't want us to have too much time to make our own decisions about things. They want to keep us just a little bit off balance because if we can find our footing and get fully in control of our lives, there's always a chance we'll relearn how to say, fuck you, I'm not doing that. Someone who's already completely bogged down with the day-to-day -day grind is less likely to cause problems. Life is leading many of us around by the nose, and this leads to a toxic go-with-the-flow attitude that causes many of us to respond to bullshit with a simple resigned, it is what it is. It doesn't help that if you look for ways to regain your independence, you'll often be redirected to hustle culture and alpha male content creators, who just put a fancy new coat of paint on the same message we're being fed by the mainstream. Stop complaining and get back to work. I'd wager that stoicism becoming trendy has done more damage to Gen Z and millennials than vaping has. Stoicism as the internet understands it is nothing more than a weaponized lowering of standards, and late-stage capitalism is already a conspiracy to gradually erode your standards and keep you working harder and harder for less and less reward. It's the same kind of, if you can't change the situation, change your attitude, cope, that early 2010's toxic positivity culture sold us. You aren't enlightened or tough for keeping your head down and staying silent when by all rights screaming at the top of your lungs about how your situation sucks is actually the more warranted approach. You're a circus animal that's been caged for so long that you don't even have the gumption to gnaw at the bars of your cage anymore. Such a person is ripe for recruitment by the cult of khakis and polo shirts. The other reason many people become watered-down versions of themselves in their mid-twenties is that their brains finish developing before they have a chance to figure out who they are and what they stand for. If you master logic before you have a direction in mind for it to take you, you often just start taking the path of least resistance. 
Every decision becomes based on fear of consequences, and this makes you more predictable and easier to manipulate. If dispassionate pragmatism is all that guides you, then you can be led in any direction simply by making it the safest and easiest path. Logic and reason are great tools, but if you let others shape your goals for you, those tools aren't truly your own. The notion of the ideal man as someone who's cold and logical is heavily flawed and not universal throughout different civilizations. Many of us are hot-blooded and passionate, and this is to be embraced and used for guidance and motivation, not treated like a sickness that needs cured for the purpose of social control. Logic makes a great map showing you how to get where you want to go, but emotion is the compass pointing you in the right direction. The end result of these factors is that you bargain away your true self one compromise at a time. If you aren't careful, you may end up so diluted that there's no recognizable trace of your old self. Now you've become nothing more than the sum of the roles you play and the responsibilities you hold. An NPC in modern internet lingo. NPC. There's a term that the anti-individualism crowd hates. They think it's arrogant, dehumanizing even. How dare you imply that it's a bad thing to not strive to be the main character in your own life. This term is a useful one, though. If someone's main role in social situations is nothing more than to reinforce existing social norms, that's an absolutely soulless way to live and interact with others. It's akin to Agent Smith making sure everyone stays plugged into the Matrix. You can claim that it's a cruel way to respond to these misguided people, but the truth is that if all you do is adapt to your environment, all you'll be is a product of it. If all you are is a product of your environment, you don't truly have free will. If you don't have free will, you aren't as sentient as someone who does. You may rely on the defense mechanism for low-agency people known as determinism, which asserts that no one truly has free will. Personally, I'm waiting for academia to catch on and classify determinism for what it truly is, a logical fallacy. Any claims that humans don't have free will can be countered with one incredibly simple rebuttal. Speak for yourself. When I call someone an NPC, it isn't just to signal that their peer pressure won't work on me, but to try to encourage them to do better for themselves. Well, that and because old people ran sheeple into the ground and made it corny, so we needed a new word. This is why another meme, the soy jack, has become so effective in online arguments. While the soy jack is normally meant to be a low testosterone, effeminate man, his true flaw isn't that he's feminine. There are plenty of femboy caricatures in meme culture that could be used if that was truly the heart of what was wrong with soy jacks. No, the soy jack is a man who enthusiastically participates in everything that society tells him he should, and looks with judgment upon those who don't. His political views align perfectly with those promoted by his favorite news channel. His interests are only slightly more interesting than Marvel movies and professional football, and his comfort zone is small. This is where the I support the current thing meme originated. So what am I, some kind of conspiracy theorist? Do I wear tinfoil hats and tell people the earth is flat? No, I'm just someone who realized at a young age that I was right about several things that my elders were loudly and confidently wrong about. I was 16 when I figured out that the working world is set up so we have to exert constant, intense effort just for a coin toss chance at being rewarded for it. I realized that if we're expected to have to earn our very survival, then it's a sign that society is failing. I realized that if this is the case, then we owe society no more than it owes us. These are all considered legitimate political talking points now, but in 2007, these takes were edgy as fuck. I could tell I was onto something, though, by how quickly the baby boomers resorted to empty platitudes and thought-terminating cliches in order to avoid engaging with what I was saying. Welcome to the real world is the favorite motto of someone who lazily enforces the status quo, who has become so focused on the way things are that they lose sight of the way things should be. A way of dismissing any demands for a fairer world as delusional youthful idealism. 
Once I came to these realizations that I was noticing things that the adults were too overburdened by life to even bother thinking about, I promised myself that I'd hold on to my edge even when I was 50 years old. I was lucky I did so. The stripping away or misdirection of youthful angst among millennials happened as early as 2014. Somehow we went from just be yourself and do what makes you happy to if someone asks you to stop doing something, just stop and don't push back. Our great neutering wasn't an acceptance of a predatory economic system as it was for previous generations, but in a great shrinking of comfort zones and a delusion that any boundary that was set was automatically valid and not to be pushed. We became stereotyped as fragile and neurotic, and many of us did, became, did become way higher inhibition than any other generation was. So, how do you break out of these imaginary walls that we build around us as we grow older? I've been on my journey of personal empowerment for long enough that it's hard to explain to a beginner. This and many of the other things I've said may seem pseudo-intellectual and self-indulgent, but it's true. In any case, humility is counterproductive when speaking truths that others want to ignore. There's nothing worse than seeing someone who's challenging the dominant worldview, but the whole time is buffering his revelations with phrases like, in my personal opinion, in order to try and make them easier to swallow. People determined to just cover their ears will have an easier time doing so when you do this. Anyway, when I was in my early 20s and newer to the practice of consciously insulating myself against attempts to sand the edges off of my personality, I was better at giving other people advice on this. I know that meditation helps, and that you should be more deliberate in your decision-making process. You should make decisions about who you are and what you want at times when you have the time and mental clarity to separate these decision-making processes from outside influence as much as possible. Your real personality is determined by the points of friction between yourself and society, by the hills you're willing to die on, by the things you would do and say and think even if everyone else in the world was telling you that you're wrong. Anything else you need to analyze carefully and really be honest with yourself about whether you came to those conclusions on your own or if they were fed to you by your peers and by the TV. However, this doesn't mean you should fall back on contrarianism. Blind contrarianism is almost as lazy and boring as conformity, and is often the last resort of people who may have the same kind of impulses that I have, but either lack the reasoning capabilities or the time and energy to be articulate about them. You need to think about who you are outside of the context of the roles you play. Okay, you're a construction worker, a father, and a husband. Great. How would you define yourself if these roles were taken from you by some tragic state of affairs? Putting some thought into this can really make you more resilient during tough times. When my dad lost his job during the Great Recession, it mentally broke him. He still hasn't fully recovered from it. When I th went through a brief period of unemployment, I was stressed, sure, but I didn't experience any crisis of identity. I just grinded until I managed to bounce back. I credit much of this to the strong sense of identity I cultivated when I was young. You also need to accept conflict as part of life. There will be people who oppose your goals, who find your personality abrasive, and who generally stand in your way on purpose. You need to prepare for this. Your attitude toward conflict should be, if it happens, it happens. I recommend learning how to fight to everyone, really, but in truth any fights I've been in during my adult life have barely even reached the intensity of the martial arts sparring sessions I went through to be ready for conflict. The main type of confrontations you'll face are verbal, and you need to mentally prepare for these. You'll only be ready once you know what kind of person you truly want to be and why you're proud of embodying it. Once you know what traits define you and why you're proud of them, you can start thinking of ways to parry and riposte the criticism you'll face from people who don't get it, who feel threatened by your confidence, or who simply hold opposing values to your own. Someone who's confident and unapologetic will always attract his type of people. I once had a girlfriend who broke up with me because I was too much for her, 
Too impulsive, too reckless, too stubborn, too angry. I didn't let it phase me. I just told her, make sure you're sure about this, because once you're out, you're out for good. And then a week later, I started dating the girl I told her not to worry about when we were together. Still going strong as of today. In conclusion, personal growth can be good, but only if you practice it in a deliberate way and don't merely shrink to fit whatever mold life tries to put you in. Too many people have given up too many bits and pieces of themselves and mistaken that for growth, and these people often get mad when you bring that up. True growth is about realizing just how many of the restrictions you live by are imaginary, and expanding your comfort zone without permanently living outside of it. The old school advice of just be yourself was right all along, and if you go through life playing a character, you're in danger of losing yourself in that character. The guy who left me the comment almost definitely didn't watch all this because his responses show almost no desire to actually engage with the points I made in the first video. If you watch this whole thing though, include the, ri the phrase skibbity riz in your comment. Hold on to your dreams.